Welcome to our Wednesday afternoon Bible study. Uh, this is session seven. Uh, we're glad to have you join us. Last week we uh, ended at the very end of the ministry of John the Baptist. And the end of the ministry of John the Baptist also signifies the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And that's where we take off today, uh, Luke chapter three. Uh, get your Bibles out. I'm hoping that we'll have a variety of different translations uh, being used by you all. So any Bible that you like, go ahead and grab it. The readings for today come from LibriVox.org, their public domain, and the translation we're using, the World English Bible, W-E-B, is also public domain. So we're not violating any copyright laws today. Let us go ahead and begin our session with a word of prayer, and you're welcome to pray this prayer along with me. O oh God, we know that you have revealed yourself to us through Jesus Christ, and you continue to speak to us through your scriptures, through our fellowship, and through your spirit who dwells in us. Speak to us today. Give us a mind of honest inquiry as we read and reflect upon the gospel of Luke. In exploring this gospel, may we come to know you better and may we gain insight into our own lives and situation. Then with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things which Herod had done, added this also to them all, that he shut up John in prison. John is scaring people into repentance by his vision of a terrible judgment right around the corner. So the statement that, with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people, may seem a bit ironic to modern readers. If this is good news, what does bad news look like? Herod the Tetrarch was the son of Herod the Great, mentioned earlier when Jesus was born. Uh, a Tetrarch was not as powerful as a king, a tetrarch is simply one among four rulers, uh, so he didn't have the same authority that his father had, but still he had enough influence to arrest and kill people like John if they bothered him. All the Gospels suggest that Jesus began his ministry around the time that John had his tragically ended. Now, some questions to consider. Can you think of people who, like John, have been imprisoned for criticizing public officials? How important is it to you for people to have the freedom to speak out against authority? Do you think it was a good idea for John to criticize Herod's personal life? Does the personal life of a political leader matter if the person leads well? Herod was apparently threatened by John's criticism. How do you deal with criticism? Would you rather have someone honestly tell you about your bad breath or just keep quiet? Is it better to be tactful and gentle when criticizing leaders or honestly blunt? Now it happened when all the people were baptized, Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. The sky was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form as a dove on him, and a voice came out of the sky, saying, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. Luke doesn't cover up the fact that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, although he does uh, kind of minimize it by only mentioning it in passing. Uh, lots of people were baptized by John the Baptist, including Jesus, uh, is kind of the way he puts it. The baptism of Jesus was problematic for a lot of early Christians and a lot of early people because they thought that a student couldn't be any greater than the master. Now, we don't tend to think that way today, but they did back then. And so the fact that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist was a little bit of an embarrassment to early Christians. First of all, uh, does it suggest that John the Baptist was more important than Jesus? And secondly, why would Jesus be baptized for the remission of sins if he was sinless? Uh, and so for those reasons, they tended to uh, kind of minimize that and play it down. The Gospel of John, for example, doesn't even say that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. 
the earliest existing versions of Luke and some very early quotations of the Gospel of Luke uh, have the voice from the sky saying, you are my son, today I have begotten you. You'll find this reading in a lot of your Bible translation footnotes, uh, for example. Uh, this alternative reading would be a quote from Psalm 2, verses 7 through 8, which says, uh, I will tell of the decrees of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. Because today I have begotten you is in uh, some of our earliest manuscripts. There are some scholars that have made a pretty strong case that it was probably the original reading of the gospel. If this reading was original, however, it would have encouraged or even embraced the idea later condemned as heresy that Jesus was adopted as the Son of God during some point in his life instead of being born into that title and position. The idea that Jesus was adopted at his baptism or his resurrection or his ascension was later declared as heresy. And because that original reading may have led people to embrace that position, uh, it was most likely corrected to the reading that we now have to avoid this adoptionist uh, heresy. Now some questions to consider. Does the idea that Jesus was baptized by John or actually learned things from other people bother you at all? Do you think Jesus was born perfect or later became perfect or was never entirely perfect? If he was born perfect, how can Luke speak of him growing in wisdom and divine favor? There are no copies of the original book of Luke, only later copies of copies with numerous discrepancies. Is this disturbing to you? What do you think of the possibility that Luke originally had the voice in the clouds say, today I have begotten you, and it was later changed by the church? What role do you think the early church played in shaping our modern scriptures? Jesus himself, when he began to teach, was about thirty years old, being the son, as it was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matthiat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Math, the son of Matthias, the son of Simeon, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joanan, the son of Resi, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosam, the son of Elmodam, the son of Ur, the son of Jose, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Matthiat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Malaya, the son of Menon, the son of Matthiatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashan, the son of Amminadab, the son of Aram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahaliel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. End of chapters 1 through 3. Recording by Vivian Bush, Houston, Texas, on December 9, 2007. There are some significant differences between the genealogy of Jesus found in Luke and the genealogy of Jesus found in Matthew, and that's Matthew 1, verses 1 through 17. Luke wants to show that Jesus is the Savior of the world, and so he traces the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Adam, who was the ancestor of all people on the planet, 
Uh, Luke wants to show that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. And so he traces the genealogy of Jesus back to Abraham, the father of the Jewish people. Luke has 55 generations between Abraham and Jesus, while Matthew has only 41. That's another difference. And also quite a few of the names listed in both genealogies are different. Uh, for example, Luke has Heli as uh, Joseph's father, and Matthew has Jacob as Joseph's father. Now, some of that can be explained by the fact that some people were known by two names, but that explanation doesn't work in some of these cases where, uh, where well, it just can't be. Uh, for example, Luke traces Jesus through David's son Nathan, while Matthew traces Jesus' ancestry through David's son Solomon. So it, it's hard to understand how Jesus could be directly descended by, from David by way of two different sons. Now, some commentators have proposed that Luke records Mary's genealogy and Matthew has Joseph's. However, both genealogies, uh, if you read them, pretty plainly go through Joseph. Uh, in Luke, for example, look at Luke 3.23. It is widely accepted, however, that the genealogies must be leaving a number of names off the list if they are to be taken halfway seriously. The idea that the earth is only around six to 12,000 years old comes from the genealogies found in the Bible. While we don't know the ages of the lot, a lot of the people mentioned, uh, we can give them some ballpark figures, and if you do that and you take the list literally, uh, then the earth ends up being only around 7,000 years old. Now some questions to consider. How important is it really to have the genealogies of Matthew and Luke consistent? What is the point of Luke's genealogy anyhow? If Jesus was only the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, Luke 3.23, and not really his biological son, why does this genealogy even matter? How old do you believe the earth to be? Is it a problem for you when the estimates of modern geologists clash with the estimates of Luke, the genealogist? Are there significant factors in your own genealogy that inform and inspire who you are today? In what ways do our histories inform our present lives? What do you know about your ancestors? Well, this concludes our Bible study for today. We are trying to keep them to about 15 minutes in length. We will continue next week with Luke chapter 4. And I'm hoping that you'll tune in next week and uh, follow along with us as we progress through the Gospel of Luke. Also, we do have worship services on Sunday mornings that we post online uh, on YouTube. You can find them there. You've you can watch all of our old services and any new ones when they get posted. Uh, please feel welcome to join us in that regard as well. So uh, let's go ahead and conclude now with a word of prayer. God, we are grateful that you are a God who cares for us, who hears our prayer, and who meets our need. We trust in that today uh, as we leave here, Lord, uh, meditating on the ministry of Jesus Christ. May that ministry continue and find fulfillment in the deeds that we perform all in his name, guided by his spirit. Amen.